Okay, so here you go. We have um, Alabama's ACT Aspire results by school, two years worth. Our previous map had uh, the results by district. This is by school. So the three things that you want to get familiar with uh, in using this map in particular, and really any of Tableau's interactive features. First, you want to learn how to use the interactive tabs, which on this particular visualization are at the top of the page. So you've got a whole bunch of buttons. We're going to figure out what they do and how you can use those to answer some questions you may have. Then you're going to learn what the markers show. All of those circles on the map, what do they mean? Why are some of them red? Why are some of them bigger than others? And that sort of thing. Third thing you want to learn how to do is how to zoom on the map. Okay, Zooming on the map is really going to be the key for you to figure out what you're looking at. Uh, this is too much information in one place. So you can, there are ways to zoom in, there are ways to narrow down what you're looking at so that you can see a clearer picture. Okay, so the first thing we're going to learn is how to use the interactive tabs, these tabs up here. We've got two years of results, 2013-14, 2014-15. We're going to start with the 2014-15, okay? As you can see, when you push a button, it takes a moment for Tableau um, to take all these lines of data and turn them into new pretty data points for you. So you're going to need to, the, all the test results are provided by grade, subject, and subgroup. Okay, so you have to have grade, subject, and subgroup chosen in order to see some results. So we're going to choose grade three. These are reading results. Let's just click to math and see what happens. Okay, math results. Um, the colors change. Let's talk about what the markers mean real quick. The size of the circle indicates the percentage of students who are eligible for free or reduced price meals. That is a proxy for the percentage of students in poverty. Okay, so the, you know you see these little things up here. We're going to get to those in a minute. But um, looking at this map, just know that the size of the circle, these smaller circles here, these are schools with smaller percentages of poverty. The ones with the high um, levels of poverty are going to have larger circles. Okay, so that's why that changes. The color, what does the color mean? Here's the legend for the color. It's a standardized scale, so 0% is dark red, 100% is dark green, and the varying shades of each. I've just gone with six levels of color rather than a whole different huge range of color. So as you um, move through, some are going to be dark, dark green, some are going to be dark, dark red. So that tells you the level of, uh, the percentage of children who are proficient, which for ACT Aspire results means the percentage of students who are ready or are exceeding the standards that are being measured. Okay, so that's what we mean by proficient. Then we've got, um, you got to choose a subgroup. There is a subgroup called All Students, so that gives you an idea of the overall grade and subject. Remember, these we don't have school-level results. We have grade and subject results. Okay, so if you want to just see how one subgroup is performing, let's go down White Kids. Let's see how White Kids are performing. Okay, so there's a lot of green. Um, there are, you know, various size circles. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Now let's say we want to look at all the schools in the Birmingham area. So you first you're going to unclick all, okay, and everything disappears. So you're going to have to click something so you can see something. So here are your Birmingham area schools, and these areas were determined by the State Department of Education. Here's a place where you're going to need to zoom. So the easiest way is to click twice, then recenter your map by just clicking on it, holding it, and dragging it. All right, so you can see the circles, everything sort of readjusts to the size of the map. So let's say we want to zoom in even more. Now we're able to see, first of all, lots of varying levels of poverty. Okay, uh, we've got large circles, we've got small circles. Um, and again, we're looking at white kids right now. Let's go back to the all students group. So we're going to look at all of the students. We've still got a lot of circles. We might want to zoom in. Maybe we just want to look at Shelby County, or maybe we want to just look at St. Clair County. Okay, This is where you get to decide what you want to look at. Every time you move the map, Tableau is going to um, 
readjust. So let's talk for a second about what the um, tool tips show. You get a tool tip when you hover over one of the circles. All right. So here we have the name of the school, the name of the system, which school year it is, the grade, the subject, the total number of students in the grade. Now, that's important because in a very small school, um, if you've got 22 kids in a grade, you know, just a couple of children um, can sway the results, can uh, raise the percentage or lower the percentage. So that's why we included that. Um, the local per pupil uh, expenditure, um, that is only for fiscal year 14 or school year 2013-14. We don't have the fiscal year 15 data yet. I put it there as an indicator so that you can see what kind of local dollars um, the um, school district raises to throw on top of federal and state money. Here's the subgroup, and then you've got your ready plus exceeding group, and that's 65%. Okay? So that's why it's green. Anything above 50% is green. Have a little more information school enrollment and district enrollment. The level of poverty, FRL stands for free and reduced lunch, the level of poverty at the school, level of poverty at the district. Then we've got the full set of results because ACT Aspire results come in four levels in need of support, close, ready, and exceeding, and those are displayed for you. So now we're going to figure out um, let's go back to all, okay? So when we want to zoom out, we want to get back where we were, let's click Zoom Home. And that gets us back to our original view. All right, now we're going to learn how to use these sliders. This is where um, the data analysis gets really interesting. Okay, so let's first look at poverty. If we want to see, say, the level, um, what are the results for the, the schools where there is not a lot of poverty? As you can see, as I reduce this, you can see how few schools uh, you end up with. Okay. These are the schools that have 20% uh, poverty in their schools. So if you want to zoom in, you want to see what a few of these schools look like and where they are. We've got a few here in Montgomery. We've got one there in Tuscaloosa. We've got some here in um, Jefferson County. You've got um, some, I believe I saw some up here in um, Madison County. So we can see those results are pretty green, right? All right, let's zoom home again. This shows you where those schools are. Um, whenever you see a number pop up, that's the level of kids that are proficient. Okay, so we had in this school in Lauderdale County, uh, the 20 kids in the third grade in math, 100% of them were proficient. Okay, now let's look the other way. Let's move the slider all the way back so we catch all students. Now let's see what happens when we go with 80% poverty. What are the results like? Well, in some places, they're still green. So, hmm, okay, you know, we have this stereotypical idea that poverty equals poor performance. Well, this map shows that isn't the case, that there are schools where kids are succeeding on the ACT Aspire, um, even though they may have high levels of poverty. And it's really important to understand that this level of poverty is at the school level, not the district level. Okay, even though the district level is included in these results, this is the school's level of poverty that's indicated by the size of the circle. So let's get on down to where, let's say, we want to see 90% of kids in poverty. Another way to use this, by the way, is to just hover over. This box will come up, and you can key in um, the level of percentage that you want to view. So we say 0.9 here. So now we're only looking at the schools that have 90% or higher poverty. We still see some green, okay? If we want to zoom in, let's say we see something, and you can see that some of these are hidden. Uh, if we want to see something, let's go, we, we hover over the arrow, we click this that has a magnifying glass, and then we just sort of draw a box around the area that we want to see. That brings it in closer. So now we know we're in Etowah County. This is Thompson Elementary School, all right? So 54% of the kids are, are uh, proficient on the ACT Aspire in the third grade math uh, with a 90% level of poverty in the school. So this tells you, this allows you a quick look at, um, you know, being able to narrow down the kids in poverty. Now let's use this students proficient. Let's say we only want to see where are the kids that are 80% proficient or 80% of the kids in the grade are proficient. 
Huh. Okay, so that tells us, you see the, the level of circles. Now there's a, there's a big circle. All right, we've got 59.4% of the kids in poverty here in this school. Um, these circles, here's 83.3% proficiency in a school with 55% poverty in Coffee County. So again, you can do this for all of the schools um, in, in the whole state. Uh, you can, let's make sure this goes back down to zero. Um, you can narrow it down if you only want to look at particular systems. Now, there's a trick here. If you only want to look at particular systems and you're going to deselect all, right, and then you're going to go through and you're going to choose which systems you want to look at, say Auburn and Baldwin County and um, Blunt County and Butler County or Calhoun County. Okay, so these are the only ones that you want to see. Then you have um, these results. Hmm, I wonder where Baldwin County went. Ah, it didn't click. You have to make sure that it clicks. So here we've got all our schools. Now you'll notice here that these narrowed down. Now you don't have the ability, even though it says all, you're not looking at all of the schools. So if you want to go back to all of the schools, you're going to have to pull this menu back down, click all, then this menu repopulates itself. Okay? So now you know how to use this. Um, it's a great way to get an overview if you're trying to figure out where is their success? Where are kids being successful on the ACT Aspire results? Um, where are kids uh, in need? And you can look by um, subgroup. Um, there is a, a, a little quirk in here about the poverty subgroups. Free meals, free reduced meals, fully paid meals, these three were not used in the 2014-15 results, okay? Instead, they used the poverty and non-poverty categories. So these are used for 2013-14, these are used for 2014-2015. Um, you know, one of the uh, areas I'm interested in is the success of children in special education. So if I just want to look at the third graders in math for this month's, uh, this year's results, then I can narrow it down to special education students. Now the flip side of special education students is general education students, okay? Typically these things are, um, you know, you have groups that are sorted. So now we see here's the success of the kids in general education. Hope this is helpful. I hope that it can answer some questions for you. I think it's, it's a good idea for all of us to get a bigger picture of what's happening in Alabama. A lot of times we don't look outside our own schools or our own districts, but as we consider really important things like um, changing a funding formula or whenever we look at new policy initiatives or curriculum changes um, or the way that money is distributed or grant programs, it's a good idea to get a better picture through an analysis like this. I hope it's helpful. Thank you.